Most people probably thought monarchy had little bearing one way or the other on their everyday lives. Then in the mid-70s, an extraordinary sequence of events made them think again. The Australian Parliament was in deadlock over the budget and the government faced paralysis. Remembrance Day, 1975. The Queen's representative in Australia was the Governor-General, Sir John Kerr. He had a plan to break the political stalemate, but it would be difficult and controversial. At lunchtime, the Prime Minister, Gough Whitlam, drove up to Government House. He wanted to see Sir John about the crisis. As he walked through to the Governor-General's study, he thought his term as the Queen's Prime Minister had two more years to run. He had just sat down to outline his plans to his one-time friend when the Governor-General interrupted him. He said, well, before we come to that, uh, I, uh, I have to give you this. This was the letter dismissing me. And how did you react to that? Well, I got up, shook hands and left. The reserve powers of the Crown, which the Governor-General was using on the Queen's behalf, had seldom been called upon. She herself had not been consulted, but he was acting within the law. If Kerr had got in touch with the Queen before doing it, it wouldn't have happened. Her immediate reaction would have been, have you consulted your Prime Minister? Or what is your Prime Minister's advice? I mean, do you doubt that she would have said that? Here is a news flash from the ABC newsroom. The Prime Minister, Mr Whitlam, has been dismissed from office. The opposition leader... The leader of the opposition, Malcolm Fraser, was appointed Prime Minister on condition that he called an immediate general election. Whitlam and his supporters denounced it as a royal coup d'etat. They were milling around the Parliament building when the Governor-General's man came forward with the official proclamation. We passed on the steps and uh, when the crowd saw me, they started booing and jeering. Proclamation by His Excellency the Governor-General of Australia. And when he saw and heard the crowd, the film footage which I saw later showed him turning, thinking it out and then pushing his way back down the steps to take up a position behind me. He'd suddenly seen the photo opportunity, is what you call it perhaps, uh, of being there for that moment. The messenger, the secretary, read the proclamation. Then, of course, I made the most memorable speech ever made in that building. Well, may we say, God save the Queen. because nothing will save the Governor-General. Shortly afterwards, Whitlam, now leader of the opposition, made a call to Buckingham Palace. Day hadn't yet broken in London. I did ring Sir Martin Charteris, the Queen's secretary. He answered the phone and said, uh, uh, good morning, Prime Minister. He had not heard of the coup. Kerr kept not only his Prime Minister, uh, but his Sovereign Lady in the dark. My information is that she was delighted not to have been consulted in advance. She herself might not have been in such a hurry to use her powers of last resort, but in the end she saw this as an entirely Australian affair. The interesting thing is, it did not provoke an immediate revolution against the monarchy in Australia. Indeed, Gough Whitlam lost the election comprehensively and never returned to power. But the fires of republicanism had been lit. The issue was argued over for the next 24 years. Eventually, a referendum was held in 1999. The republicans, to their surprise, were defeated. But on recent visits to Australia, the Queen has seemed to acknowledge that that might not be the last word. Whatever may lie ahead, I declare again here tonight that my admiration, affection and regard for the people of Australia will remain as it has been over these past 50 years, constant, sure and true.